nice enough to join us right now. He covers the New York Giants from ESPN. You see him on ESPN. You read all of his coverage at ESPN.com every once in a while. Nice enough to join us here on The Drive, and that is our friend Jordan Ronan. Jordan, how you doing today? Good. What's going on, guys? I mean, uh, it's not been a good start to the season, but, uh, you know, it's... we're trudging along here and uh, <laughs> have fun with Buffalo coming up for sure. Yeah, no fun at all. Yeah. I mean, you talked about it. Trudge is a good word because it almost seems like every offensive play was a trudge, and that sort of seems to be the vibe around this team right now. You cover them. You're around them. What's going on with them? Yeah, I mean, they can't function offensively with their offensive line in the state that it is right now. It's really that simple. It's, you know, ruining everything offensively. They can't do anything consistently. Uh, They're, you know, had to move guys around. They don't have Andrew Thomas. Evan Neal's not playing well. I mean, you could look at it and say the line they started yesterday with Ben Ben Bredesen at center, he's, in my opinion, he's a much better guard than he is center. They have a below average player at all five spots on the offensive line and Daniel Jones legitimately has like no time to function even when they they're trying to make good plays uh I mean he he's got somebody in his face in like less than two seconds so it's really untenable at this point and now what do you what do you get as a result when your quarterback is getting hit constantly eventually he gets injured right and so yesterday he hurt his neck now so it does seem to be optimism on that, but let's see how the week kind of plays out. And and looking at the the performances before the injury came, that that's Miami and otherwise. Obviously, your your quarterback is going to catch shrapnel when your your offense isn't scoring. But I, I mean, from a a decision making standpoint, have you seen Jones take any steps forward when he does have time to throw, or is part of this on him as well? I don't think he's played well, but I also don't think you're going to have many quarterbacks, and I don't even care if it's, you know, who you're going to name, that if you're under this kind of pressure consistently, everything doesn't start moving faster. Like, right. it's just hard to function. So, yes, I do not think he's played particularly well. I think he would admit that to you. Uh, and But also, there's not a heck of a lot of opportunities. So, it, it's been a, a tough go early in the season. I mean, when you're getting cracked, 11 times in a game, six times in a game, seven times in a game, uh, you're just, you're, you're not going to look very good. I think that's, that's just like a, an obvious fact, but I, that's yeah. where they're at. So. It, but yeah, you know, he makes all the money, right? He makes the $40 million a year. He's going to get the blame and he understands that. And it's some of it's probably deserved. He could obviously do better, but look, do we think Daniel Jones, the guy who's going to take an awful offensive line and with mediocre, you know, skill position players and no Saquon and no Andrew Thomas and lift them on his back and carry them and beat good teams? I, I, I don't have that expectation for him. I think if you do, uh, probably looking at the wrong guy. Yeah, and I, I, I get that, Jordan. But, I mean, it, it, it seems like Andrew Thomas got hurt. And then everything started to spiral. And then, you know, John Michael Schmitz was playing great, uh, and he's out. But it really didn't, I mean, it, if Andrew Thomas going out was going to take this team completely off of its kilter, something wasn't designed right. Oh, absolutely. But, well, the biggest concern, and I'm sure I said it on your show, because I said it on pretty much every show I've been on, uh, this summer, like, the things that concerned me were essentially the offensive line, right, and the overall depth on the team. And those are the two things that you've seen shine through and just completely derail the team. It's been like the perfect storm. Yes. The two players, you say, you know what, they're probably two most indispensable players because of the backups they have behind them on offense are Saquon and Andrew Thomas. Well, they played a combined, what, you know, so Saquon's played two games and Andrew Thomas has played one. One. So, yeah, you take away those two guys, and I, I get they got smashed even with those two guys against Dallas. But you take away those two guys, and offensively, this this offense is not going to be very good. If we said, if I told you before the season, what would the Giants look like without Andrew Thomas and Saquon Barkley? What would you think? Probably pretty close to yeah, where they are right, right now. now. Yeah, that's true. And, and so, so you have to kind of keep that in mind. Of like, those are their two most important players. It's like at least the quarterback 
you have Tyrod Taylor behind him now. Yes. I'm not overly confident in Tyrod Taylor personally. Like that he could, you know, not be reckless and stay healthy over a long period of time. But he is at least a serviceable option who has proven that he could play in this league. What's behind Andrew Thomas? Josh Azudu. <laughs> like this is so and this has to go on Joe Shane and then the planning of Brian Dable. Josh Azudu couldn't win the starting right guard job over Mark Lewinsky. Right. Think about that for a second. Yep. So what happens? He now has to start at left tackle? Like, if you can't win the starting right guard <laughs> job over Mark Lewinsky, you think you, should, you think you want that to be your starting left tackle? And that's kind of where they are. And I, it's like, yes, Josh Azudu's been really bad the last couple games. Yeah. Right? Uh, but it's like, I almost feel for him, like, he, he, he shouldn't be in that spot. Right. Especially if it's not like a, ri- a line of, like, you know, that's really solid at all the other spots to help him out. You know, you see where you can just like, okay, we'll help him on every play. No, no, they need to help Evan Neal. Yes. Right? Oh, we, they need they need to help. Their guards are, are I mean, Marcus McKeithen, it might be, you know, I, he got a 0.0, 0 yeah. uh, grade on his pass blocking by Pro Football Focus before he got injured yesterday. That's probably generous. 0.0. 0. Yeah. And then his replacement at right guard? Jalen Mayfield, guess what his PFF grade was in pass blocking? Negative? 0.0. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. I can't tell you how hard it is to get a 0.0. <laughs> I, you know, and back then to have back. two guys do it? Yeah. Like, that's where they're at. We're at, like, all-time low uh, point of where the Giants' offensive line has been since I've been covering this team in 2013. And there's been a lot of bad offensive lines during that time. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with you. We're hanging out with our guy, Jordan Ronan of ESPN. He covers the New York Giants and the NFL. You can follow him on Twitter at Jordan Ronan. You can read all of his coverage at ESPN.com. You see him on ESPN, and every once in a while, nice enough to join us here on the drive. All right, before I, as the Giants fan on the show, get physically ill talking about the offense any longer, uh, the, the defensive side of the ball, though it wasn't, it wasn't overly pretty either uh, uh, against Miami, a couple of turnovers forced. Uh, have you seen anything that that started to show through the cracks in the defensive side that that you could uh, that you would say is promising for this group, if nothing else? I mean, yeah, three turnovers you have to look at as a positive. They scored a touchdown, right? Yeah. They basically were the Giants. Yeah. I think they've done better, but I mean, they did also let up over 500 yards to the Miami Dolphins. Right. Uh, now, granted, that's a really explosive special offense. I think they're going to do big, big things this year. I, I mean. What Mike McDaniel is doing there with the way that he's stretching you horizontally by having guys in constant motion. You're basically having to guard from one sideline to the other sideline, and then that opens these vertical gaps and seams for the ridiculous speed that they have. I, I think their offense is going to be special. Like It really is. Like I don't know why no one else has been able to do what he's you know, doing over there, but it, it's to me, it seems ingenious. So, with that being said, you still don't want to let up over 500 yards. Yeah. But they did make plays. They played better the week before, even in a loss to Seattle. It was, certainly was not the defense's fault. Uh, the turnovers on the offense did them in in that game. So, I think we're seeing a little better version. But this isn't a great Giants defense. I think we kind of knew that coming in. Like, they have some players, but it's not a perfect defense. Uh, they're thin again, so Aziz Ojolari keeps getting injured. Again, this is why I said before the season, depth, depth, depth. You know, Aziz Ojolari gets injured, and what do they have behind him? Like, who, where's the pass rush behind him? So, yeah, there's there's reason to at least think this unit could be decent, um, but it's just they, they let up too many big plays. There's still too many mistakes on that unit for them to get to where I think they want to go. All right, Jordan, before we let you go and before we, we ask you about Buffalo, Brian Dable, uh, you know, he's caught some heat for the way that you mentioned the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, it honestly looked like the Giants were unprepared for that game. When you see the job Dable has done through the first five games of the season, what are your thoughts about how he's been able to make the most out of what he's got there? Yeah, well... I think uh, the hype train has slowed a little bit, right? 
him and Mike Kafka being able to scheme around all these deficiencies and being offensive geniuses and Joe Shane's season, Joe Shane's cooking too. You know, that's all you heard in the off season. I think uh, we can halt that hype, right? I, it's pretty clear they're not as good as they thought. Uh, they're probably not as good even as we thought, right? Wow. I don't know where you guys had them. I, I had them like, I think I had them eight and nine. Okay. Uh, yeah. This season. But even then, like, they're not going eight and nine this season. Nope. They're not getting there. And they're already in too big a hole. So they're worse than we thought. And some of that has to go on Brian Dable. You know, it's his job to get these guys to come out and play. Uh, there's been too many mistakes, too many silly mistakes. You, like you said, it's almost like it looks like they're unprepared at times. Uh, and that falls on his shoulders. So, yeah. Uh, last year, I think there was some of these cracks, by the way. But the ultimate deodorant in professional sports is always winning. Because if you think about it, remember, first of all, he put a Dory Jackson back to return punt. It was a brutal mistake. He got injured. Yep. They didn't have any depth there. And it basically sent him into a tailspin because they couldn't replace him. Right? They had 10 men on the field allowing two touchdowns. Yep. The special teams were making silly mistakes throughout the season. But when you win, it's the ultimate deodorant. You're willing to overlook these kind of things. So I think this is sort of like a, you know, a return to the mean. Everything's sort of leveling out. This is the worst-case scenario. Last year was the best-case scenario. Well, and the reality is they're probably somewhere in between. And Brian, that goes for Brian Dable as well. His homecoming to Buffalo is not going to get much better Ugh. after what they uh, experienced across the pond in London. <laughs> I would imagine Buffalo is going to be pretty hungry to put a whooping on somebody. <laughs> yeah, this is a tough spot for the Giants again. By the way, like the rest of the country has to be sitting there like, come on, man. We don't want to see the Giants again. Like, right. how many times do we have to see them basically get their head smashed against the curb on national TV? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean, the Some fourth time in six weeks. And if you're not a, first of all, even if you're a Giant fan at this time, at this point, you really, I, I don't, don't want to see, see them. No. Yeah. Nailed but it. the rest of the nation, man, they're like, they're probably looking at this week and then they're looking at the schedule coming up and they're like, what? The Giants? Again? We got to watch that team get killed <laughs> by the Bills? <laughs> I mean, the spread. Did you guys see the spread? No, what is it? Would it? Take guesses. What do you think it is? Ten and a half. I'm going 13 and a half. Okay, so last week, mind you, the Dolphins ended at 12 and a half. Right. Oh. This is the Bills in a primetime game. Yeah. Uh, you want to you want to amend your guess? Yeah, yes. I'm going oh boy, I'm this fan too. Seventeen and a half point favorites. Okay, not quite. I'm not going to that. I'm gonna go to I'll go to I'll go to thirteen and a half. That's what yeah, I said. 14, you did? I think it was okay. fourteen and a half as it was. Ah, good lord. Still. So to be to be over two touchdown underdogs in the NFL is that's why. That's a crazy number. Like you don't usually get fourteen point underdogs. In the NFL, but, no, uh, that's where we're at right now. At and that. by the way, <laughs> Miami covered and turned and lost three nothing in the turnover category. Right, think about that yeah. for a second. Well, yeah, yeah, and you got to work bananas. at that too. Yeah. I mean, like you can't <laughs> sucking like that in the NFL just doesn't come easy. So it, yeah, it, it, you know, it, it, it doesn't. He's our guy, Jordan Ronan from ESPN. He covers the New York Giants and the NFL. Read all of his coverage at ESPN.com. Certainly follow him on Twitter at Jordan Ronan. You see him on ESPN and every once in a while, nice enough to join us. Hey, man, thank you so much. I know it's uh, been a long trip. Your neck has to hurt from watching the Dolphins score all the points. So uh, we appreciate it, and hopefully we get to talk to you soon. You got it, guys. Fortunately, Miami is one of the few stadiums where the media sits, the, the, the press box is in the end zone. You don't have to turn from side to side. Oh, uh, wow. Nice. So the, dis the disaster, disaster comes oh, right at you. Blur going into the distance 150 yards away from me right now. Oh, that's fantastic. That's Nothing like yeah. covering a game from the end zone. That is, <laughs> yeah. That's great. Well designed there down in Miami. Hey, man, thanks I a lot. I thought it was only Washington, but I guess I was wrong. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's terrible, terrible design. <laughs> thanks, man. Really appreciate you hanging with us. You got it in time, guys.